Hello to everybody. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. I think um, let's start off with, with the location where we are. Um, and we just heard about the businesses. We're from a different angle. Uh, we're a non-profit foundation that has as a core um, the sustainability for the oceans, um, for the seas. Uh, we picked the name with One Ocean purposely because we just think there is no boundaries. So I think um, when we talk about the water, 71% of, of, of the ocean surface is covered with water. If we go even into the depth, it's going to become even more. Uh, compared to the land mass, and it's pretty simple. Without ocean, there is no life. So um, back to basics. And um, uh, our foundation um, has been, uh, we're pretty young. Uh, it comes from the YCCS, from the Yacht Club Cosmos Esmeralda, that's our founding member. Uh, when we did our 50th uh, celeb year celebration in 2017, as a group of uh, passionate sailors and, and, and yachties, um, um, it became natural that there's there's time to give back. And so, um, although we're pretty late in the game, I think, uh, let's hope it's not too late. <laughs> and uh, let's spread some um, some hope. Um, where before we heard from the professor, the example from Egypt, which I think is pretty, <clears throat> um, gives us a headway of what are the possibilities if we really want to, if we really put all our uh, technologies and knowledge together we can drive change really fast. Um, so um, let's start with the SDG 14 on the United Nations. Um, this is basically the driver of our, of our mission as the, as the foundation. And we work basically as an activation platform. Activation platform with, uh, with four pillars. Um, we're talking about the um, main issues basically that we're facing with the oceans, um, talking about marine, uh, pollution, plastic, uh, I think over the past two years the communication, communication finally has changed and you, there's not a day that you don't see a picture or some, some kind of news in social media about plastic pollution, uh, which is just one of the ingredients, but it's obviously very visible and good to communicate. Um, climate change, we heard about it, um, CO2 emissions about the ocean. Um, and I think where we are here with the NASDAQ, um, one, of our, one of the key pillars is uh, actually economy. And uh, when we talk about uh, the blue economy, it's a huge, huge future um, uh, possibility to really drive change. And um, that's where our foundation also tries to become a platform, helping companies. Um, we have a lot of scientists that are part of our foundation. We have a board of scientists, and so we can actually provide some scientific data and some scientific advice also on which way to move forward, um, on where to concentrate on in order to really uh, make a change. So blue technology, we're talking about the market of uh, uh, $3 billion uh, over the next 20 years. So talking about innovation, um, if you don't really... if if, if <laughs> Uh, if, if the driver is more economically than, 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 than really consciously, then uh, still that's the way to go. And ocean literacy, basically, we're talking about uh, uh, trying to inform the main population of how important the ocean is. Because it's really strange, but even in our schools still today, we don't hear that the ocean gives us 50% of the oxygen that we breathe. You know, we still grow up with all the trees and with the CO2. It's all connected, obviously. But you don't really realize how much, how, how much of the ocean affects our daily lives, from the climate, from the currents, from um, um, oxygen, a lot, a lot of things. So um, we had a, um, an international forum in, in Milan in October 2017. That's where we really kicked off our activity. And uh, with a group of scientists, the outcome of that forum was the Carta Smeralda, which is basically a, it's a, um, a code of conduct. It's, it's, a, it's an ethical code um, that summarizes a bit uh, what every one of us can do as an individual, uh, what you can do as an association. If you are a company, uh, it doesn't really matter if you're an organization. But these are basically, uh, it's online. You can sign it. We are looking for signatures. Uh, free of charge, it's basically, it's, it's a guidance, it's a quick guidance of what you can do if you really want to do something about just being sustainable. And there's all kind of practical examples in there as well. So um, this is basically of, of the, the, the main mission that we have also within the companies, also the partner companies, 
try to implement as much as you can from an individual perspective, because as you say, impact, everything has an impact. But um, more so, I think what we really see is what drives change is if the companies and the economics are behind it. And there's also an economic interest. Unfortunately, that's part of our nature as human beings, I guess. <laughs> so um, um, I think we'll uh, launch this video. <laughs> okay. Good timing. From the start, we've been saying it clearly. We have to act to protect the ocean because human life depends on it. You are never too young to make a difference. More and more people are becoming aware of how much we can do when working together, adopting behavior to defend the environment. That's why we are spreading the ocean literacy, understanding the influence that the ocean has on us and how we affect the ocean is the first step to making a difference. Because in reality, we look at the sea without seeing it. We are not concerned about what is happening underneath the waves because those problems are out of our sight. But those are the things that are seriously changing the possibilities of life on Earth. It's the accumulation of many pollutants and plastic waste. Acidification. It's the rising temperature. It's the reduction of marine habitats and biodiversity. The ocean and human beings are inextricably intertwined, but this doesn't seem to matter. The ocean also provides livelihoods for more than 3 billion people and has a huge economic value. If it were a nation, it would be the seventh largest economy in the world. We are ocean defenders young but very determined to act, to deal with the emergency and really change the future of the planet. Every day we commit to communicating, educating, raising awareness through sports, promoting scientific research. Carta Esmeralda is our code of ethics. We promote it to spread the commitment to protect the marine ecosystem in every activity. Only a change in each individual's behavior leads to a whole change. The knowledge of the problem leads to the awareness of wanting to change. We don't want our children to ask us in the future why we didn't do anything while we still had time. Today, although the time we have for change is running out, together we can meet this challenge. Thank you, thank you to Azimut. Oh. Sure. Well done. So, so a quick question for you, Jan. Um, I'm fascinated by the Carta Esmeralda. I mean, we have pledges in all kinds of aspects of sustainability in business. We see them from investors, we see them from manufacturers. Has it been an effective outreach tool for you to sort of educate and engage the general public on ocean health? Um, I think it helps um, because you have to do something concrete. And um, it's, it's probably one of the many activities that we do. Uh, but I think it, it's, it's, uh, it works. I mean, obviously, it starts working when, you, when this whole thing becomes really viral and, and you have like a community of, I don't know, you know uh, millions and millions of followers. Then you really have an impact uh, because then you can go to institutions and you can go to, you know, who writes the laws and, and everything. But uh, besides that, I think um, it helps, it helps the, the, the consciousness of people. When you go into schools, when you talk to the kids, when you talk to companies, when you talk to the people, it, you can leave something concrete to yeah. them that they can actually you know, feel in touch, they can associate with. And you're not talking about something abstract like climate change where sometimes it becomes a bit difficult to, as an individual to say, okay, you know, what can I do? Um, and and um, I think um, you know, confronting ourselves more and more with scientists, with, with the scientific community, um, you realize that you know, uh, out of the whole, you know, these 71% of, of, of the world's ocean, only 2% today are protected waters for fisheries. 2%, which is nothing. 
right? And and so uh, uh, two days ago we had a conversation about the high seas, um, um, anything that's basically 200 miles outside of the of the coastline, um, and um, you know, talking about the the importance of fishery in the in the oceans. The ocean has a huge um, uh, potential of of, of uh, regenerating life. Amazing. I mean, there's there's by now a lot of examples. Um, you know, if you have marine protected areas within ten years, it can repopulate immensely. Um, obviously, pollution <laughs> is, is is a factor. But talking about high seas, if the goal would be to really reach thirty percent of our ocean surface as protected areas, we would. I mean, it would be bingo. So, Catus Morales is one of these things to sort of try to get us there. Mm -hmm.